Well, hello and welcome to Fox Rage TV. I'm Chris Lowe and you join me here today on the magnificent River Wye. Today's target is pike. Not just any pike, we're after a specimen sized pike of hopefully 20 pounds plus. So here we are, we're on the Wye. The sun is just rising over the horizon and we're out fishing and we're fishing for pike. Now, just any pike, a good pike. And a good pike to me, a specimen sized pike of 20 pound plus and I don't think there's any a river finer to achieve that goal than the wonderful river Y. We're out on a day ticket stretch um, available through the Y and Us Foundation so join me as I go pike hunting for a monster well hopefully anyway so I've just cast out um, I've found this nice sort of back eddy slack area and um, the bait's been out about 10 minutes and hopefully within another 20 minutes it's going to go under. I'm hoping that I'm going to pick a, a run up nice and quick and the idea of the day is I'm going to stick with, with using uh, dead baits today and the reason for that is the river's just finding off. It's a little bit of a colour to the water um, after it was, it's been up for the past couple of days so it's it's looking prime so the idea is I'm going to go along travel travel the beats we've got loads of river to go up fish every nook and cranny that looks pikey and hopefully we're going to snare a big fish through through the course of the day a bit later on I'll run you through rigs and in more detail and uh, just sh sh tell you more about the areas that I'm trying to find. Okay guys, we've, uh, we've just given it about half an hour, 40 minutes at one end of the swim um, in this slack area, this back, big back eddy. And uh, I've now switched it over to my right hand side. And then uh, we're gonna give it another half an hour there. And then there's one more area straight out in front of me that I just want to give that a go to. And if, if nothing's happened in the next hour, there's another slack a bit further up that we're going to try. And we're just going to keep on the move. And that's the important thing about fishing rivers. Um, to be successful, you've got to keep active and you've got to keep on the move, cover as much water as possible. And it's exactly what we're going to do today. Right then, so we're in our second swim now. The first one, even though it looked very inviting and got all the right ingredients, unfortunately, nothing occurred. But we've just moved upstream and um, I've, I've found this lovely area, a really fast section of water coming through and then a nice big back eddy and slack right on the inside. And I've just plumbed the depth and I found to about nine to 10 feet. So I reckon, I reckon that's ideal. This should hold fish. Well, I'm certain it's going to hold fish. Whether there's pike here, I don't know, but it's got everything, everything that I'm looking for. Where this fast water's running through, you'll see how it roughens up. And uh, that indicates to me that it's a lot shallower over that side, which is why there's so much turbulence in the water. And where it goes slacker into this deeper area, that's where the prey fish will hold up, that's where the pike should be. And hopefully, there's one air. And I imagine the way that's pushing through and the size of this area, we should get a take pretty quickly, hopefully. So we'll just sit back, give it a minute taking the wonderful scenery that's around us because let's face it fishing is not just about catching fish when you fish places as beautiful as this you really should take it all in okay so as we mentioned earlier we're out on the river and we're looking for for ideal areas to target to find pike 
and those areas are slack areas, back eddies, that kind of thing. Now, how do we go about spot, spotting them? Well, as you can see here, the biggest giveaway to this area here is the white foam. You see how it's being pushed in on the margin and it's hardly moving compared to the water on the other side of the crease? Dead giveaway. Watch the bubbles, see how they go back on themselves, see how they stay still stationary. And it's all little clues like that will, that will tell you those are the areas the predators are going to be. And that's where you need to be fishing. It's no point fishing it out in the flow on the other side of the crease because those the pike aren't going to be there. All right, they're going to be sitting in the slack of water, waiting for any prey to come past them, not expelling energy, and basically after an easy meal. Okay, so we've come round to the next beat. This is beat five on the uh, Whitney Court Estate. Um, this is known as Loxter's Pool. It's a great big bend, um, uh, and that's it really. The inside ed that edge that we're fishing on, that's the deepest part of the pool, the, the run here. Um, the issue that I've got, which is kind of a good thing, um, from first look, glance at it, it doesn't look like it gets fished that much yeah. at all. The problem that we've got, because it's pushing, and because of the tree cover and whatnot, I am limited to where I can fish. Um, purely because access to landing the fish is going to prove quite difficult. And because it pushes through, if I was to hook into a good fish and that gets caught up in the flow, it'll soon be downstream and I've leaves me with nowhere to go. So fish safe, safety and all that kind of stuff, you've got to take that into consideration. Uh, and, and as well as your own safety. So I'm going to have a nosey on down the, uh, down the beat, see if I can find a few areas. And then when I do, I shall set the gear up and drop in and start fishing again. So come with me and we'll go for a look. All right, so I've had a bit of a recce downstream and uh, I've just had a look upstream and I've found a right on the, the inside to where I'm fishing on the opposite bank is uh, where the flow pushes around and there's a bit of a, a slacker area. I don't know the depth yet, I'm going to plumb that in a minute. But this really does look good for a, for a bite or two really. So the plan is, I'm going to put the bait rods out again and, and hopefully uh, snare a fish. It really, really does look good. Just to the right of me, I've got a bit of an inlet from a, a, a stream. So that, that's always, you know, they're always good prime spots to fish. Um, it looks very, very rocky. I'm going to try and keep quite low because the visibility is not too bad um, and stay out of sight really. So the first thing I'm going to do on this swim is, is plumb the depth and then we'll take it from there really, put a bait on and, and get fishing. But this really does look promising. Oh, I'm, I am excited. The whole stretch just looks really, really good. And if there's a big fish, this is where I expect it to be. It's the deepest part of this uh, Whitney Court um, estate uh, stretch of river. So, you know, it's got all the ingredients for good fishing. So without further ado, I'm going to flip this out and just trying to get an idea of the depth and get a bait on him and get out there. I'm just going to chuck that just the other side of the crease line. Ooh, not too bad, not as deep as uh, I expected it to be. just feeling the lead down, just dragging it, lifting it and bouncing it and it's very very rocky. Yeah, loving this. So I'm going to stick with the Paternoster as well. 
And the reason for that is because the visibility is quite good, so pipe being pike and her eyes on top of the head. They should be able to see that silhouette as they approach it on that scent trail and come up for it. And plus it'll wave around in the current. So it might just entice them a little bit more. Just shallow off a bit. Flicking it well out of where I'm intending to fish. Yep, yeah, that's about right, it's about two foot over depth. Perfect. Right, I'm going to stick with the mackerel. Nice, smelly, oily bait. Caught lots and lots of pike. I'll just rig this up, attach it to the uh, quick link, and I'll just run you through the setup that we're using. When using a pattern oster rig, there's, there's a couple of important things that you need to be aware of, and I'll just show you those now. So as I mentioned, uh, we're fishing the, the pattern oster rig. Now the, the, the key things with the pattern oster rig is first off your bait trace. Make sure that your trace is shorter than your up trace. Okay, the reason for that, you don't want it longer because if the pike takes it, moves off with it, goes up, you don't want it cutting into your braid and cutting you off. So always make sure your up trace is longer than your, your bait trace. At the bottom of the pattern oster, I've got a rotten bottom, rotten bottom. This is eight pound line with a couple of granny knots in. Three and a half ounce lead to hold it in situ. And above the up trace, little buffer bead just to protect the knot. I've got one of our Fox Predator floats. 25 gram. Above that, I've got a bright fluorescent bead. And the reason for that, that helps me see when that float hits the stop knot sooner than, uh, than, it, than it, I would be able to without it. So that's the reason for that. And above that, we've already plumbed out the depth. I've just got a couple of float stops at the required depth we need to fish. So that's all there is to it really. So without further ado, I'm going to get this bait out there sit back, get a cup of coffee and hopefully watch them float bob under. Okay, I'll just put the rod on the rest. I'm not using the alarm or anything, there's really no need to when you're, um, when you're float fishing. Um, key thing is keep watching that float. Of course you can use the alarm if you want to but there's really no, no point. And the enjoyment of float fishing is watching that float slide away. So we're in, we're fishing. I'm just going to uh, sit here now, pour myself a nice warm drink. It's not very warm today, so sit back and, uh, and relax. Well, I'll we'll just give that, uh, that swim 30, 40 minutes. And unfortunately, no action at the moment. So uh, just moved upstream again. And we're going to try this lightly looking swim here. See what happens. Right then guys, unfortunately, as good as it looked, nothing's happened. So the time's getting on now and um, the best time is, is still to come. But we've covered this area and even though we've got really nice water in front of us, I'm going to make the decision and move further downstream and cover a bit more water and uh, hopefully we can find something before we start losing light. Real shame that this didn't produce here because I really did fancy this area. As with anything we've got to make the most of the most of the downy opportunities that are in front of us. So we're going to pack up 
So you can walk downstream, there's a, a few more swims that we looked at earlier and uh, hopefully we can find something down there. Well, we've moved downstream to the, to the area that I looked at a bit earlier on and uh, we've just had a bit, bit of a plumb around and unfortunately it's, it's not as deep as I was expecting it to be. Even though it's quite a slow pace really compared to the rest of the river, I was expecting a bit of a drop off but unfortunately there isn't. Uh, I've probably got about eight foot um, but we're going to give it a go here. Um, literally we've probably got an hour and a half left of light so I'm going to give it half an hour and I'm going to try a different bait this time, try a sardine, my nice stinky sardine and then um, my feeling is I shall move back up into that 18 foot hole for the last sort of 40 minutes and fish probably half an hour into, into dark and that, that big hole that I saw earlier has got everything that I'm looking for really it's got the depth, it's got the flow coming through on, and it, you know all the signs should be there that's where the, the bait fish are going to hold up in that slack water, in that, in that deep hole but unfortunately we've had nothing at the moment now typically with pike the last sort of half an hour into dark or half an hour, an hour into dark tends to be a really productive time and the last time I fished the Y um, for pike was back in October last year and the, the last that fish I had last year was into dark as well so we're going to give it a go here for a bit and then move up and fish into dark and I'm hoping there is something there and it, and it, it wakes up <laughs> so anyway and get this out Okay guys, so as you can see, um, we've moved swims again, uh, I've, the light's fading rather quickly and uh, we've covered a lot of water today and unfortunately so far we've had no success. Um, so I've come back to the areas that I think have got the most potential and we're going to fish those into dark and hopefully the witching hour will give us a pike. Um, I'm, I'm still confident because I, the, the spots that we're fishing now are certainly the best areas that I've found throughout the day. Um, they've got the depth and the pace and all, everything just seems right and I've, I've actually seen a couple of fish already, um, not pike, um, but certainly, certainly bait fish of some sort. So we're going to stick it out into dark. So we sit and wait, the waiting game begins. But you know, the, the key to, to finding these, these big fish, and that's what we're essentially after. We're not, we're not after doubles really. I mean, yeah, of course, it's, it's nice to catch fish, but I think you come to the Y for a, a real big one, um, just because of it's steeped in history, I suppose. You know, it's, it's known for producing big pike. Um, and hopefully, we're going to find one. Everything seems right anyway. And um, you've just got to keep putting the time in and, and keep searching the rivers, try different swims, keep on the move. You, you've got to be on the move all the time if you want to track down these fish. You know, because the waterway is such a, a vast area. There's no, no point sitting in one spot all day, no matter how good it looks. You know, we could have quite easily gone downstream, fished the shallower, faster water and hooked into a 20. You just don't know and that's the beauty of the rivers, you, you just really don't know. But as a confidence thing, this is the area that screams pike to me. And you know, you've just got to sit it out and hopefully, hopefully the float dips.
Okay, so day two. As you saw from the previous day, um, we fished dead baits. Unfortunately, it didn't work out despite fishing all the best possible marks that we could find, all the slacks, all the back eddies, deep holes, you name it, we covered it. But unfortunately, the pike didn't play ball. So, the plan is today, we're gonna have a different approach and it's gonna be lure only. Um, I'm basically just gonna stick with the replicant wobbles and see what we can do really. So different approach, different method. Let's get it on. Okay guys, so as I said, we're gonna fish lures and um, well, yeah, lure only approach. So first of all, let me just run through you some essentials that you need when you come pike fishing. Um, first off, the most important bit of kit, your cutters. Absolutely essential. You shouldn't leave home without them. Uh, I can't emphasize that enough. Pliers and obviously your forceps. So that's that out of the way. Um, big decent net. I know it looks uh, a bit overkill, but you never know. There are big fish in here, so who knows? So we'll get that out of the way and just briefly show you a few lures that I'm going to be using today. Um, <coughs> Basically, as, as I've already said, we're going to stick with uh, mainly the replicants, the wobbles. We've got the perch replicant, a new out at the moment. Um, the new trout, Arctic char, looks very good. Uh, and basically, that's it. So these are the 18 centimetre versions. And um, I've also got some of the bigger, bigger reps with me as well. Um, shallow running. And we've got the big wobbles as well so there's all sorts of sizes all sorts of colors and hopefully one of these should fall a, a pike into taking our lure so without any further ado i'm going to pick out a favorite one well not a favorite one but one that i think is going to suit the conditions today the river's very low almost summer level and it's very clear too so i'm going to stick uh, with a lure that's going to represent the roach, the chub, all the silverfish basically uh, that the Y is abundance with. Okay, so the lure I'm going to go with, uh, with the river being so clear, um, is basically a bait fish imitation, a nice silver pattern, going to have a nice flash with the, uh, a bit of sunlight that keeps happening every now and again. So, yeah, I'm going to give that a go. And the other thing that I, I've done is uh, I always stick a rattle bead in the tail just to give that extra bit of attraction so I'm gonna get this on now uh, it's been a fantastic lure for me this season it's already bagged me a 30 um, not from the Y but who knows maybe today's a, the day so let's get it on There we go, nice Y double, not as big as we come for but you know it's very early days, first fish of the day, whack that replicant, let's get her back and get another one, awesome. What a fantastic start to the day. Uh, probably my second swim, dozen casts now, and boom, straight in the net. Nice double to start the day with. Uh, yeah, proper stoke with that really. A little bit out of breath, but there you go. Uh, all I'm doing really is just combing, combing the depths, searching the water column, and that fish actually took it on the pause when that replicant was falling to the bottom. 
so yeah and what a hit it was absolutely whacked it certainly makes up for the for the blank days dead bait fishing the other day so i uh, i really can't complain with that fantastic start to the day and that's what we come for we just need one a bit bigger early signs are good no messing around with that hit that's for sure So I think I'll uh, comb this area a little bit more, search the water deeper down. Same techniques as what just got that fish hooked and uh, hopefully we'll, we might find another one. Be certainly nice if we could get that Y20. That's what we come for, so yeah. Great result getting one on the lures as well. Fantastic. Well, we've had quite a few casts in the area now. And uh, I'm thinking about moving on to the next swim. I've had probably 20 minutes, half an hour in this swim now. Pretty much covered everything. And uh, just the one fish to show for this swim. So I think we're going to move on downstream. Head to some, uh, some ground that I know hold pike and hopefully find something else down there not going to change the technique, not going to change the lure just going to stick with uh, ripping reps through the swim and as always one mass cast the river is very very clear very low, summer levels which is kind of really strange for uh, for March but nonetheless we're here fishing catching pike ripping reps onto the next swim well we're on the next swim sticking with that colour rep brilliant imitation of roach dace small chub etc on a on a day like this with the water being so clear and it's worked so far so I've got no reason to change just covering the inside margin first before we start looking elsewhere one of the things about fishing the white is always pay attention to to the match anglers you know they'll often be very willing to give you information of where the pike are etc and that's the beauty of fishing the Y here in Hereford it's a renowned match venue renowned for its uh, shoals of roach huge shoals of chub you name it it's got everything that you really want as a predator angler and of course the pike are really big too and I can't help it, but every swim I look at, every swim I go in, <laughs> my knees are shaking because you just never know. Alright then, let me just uh, talk to you about the tackle I'm using. You know, it's very important when you're fishing big, big rivers like this for big fish that I use very strong tackle and the rod that I'm using today is the uh, Fox Terminator, big bait special. Uh, it's rated 80 to 200 gram. Now, the braid I'm using is 80 pound braid and as you can see I've accomplished that with a, a bait caster. So nice and strong and the whole idea is you can play fish quickly, you can get them in if you get your lure snagged. You know, you've got half a chance of pulling your lures out of snags. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you won't lose too many today, but that's river fishing and you have to take that into consideration, which is, a uh, oh, I've got plenty of uh, lures with me. But for now, I'll keep casting away. Keep searching that water. I'm trying to find that bigger.
Well, here we are at the end of the day um, in the town section. Uh, it hasn't been easy, very bright now as you can see, the, the water level is very low and it's going to sound like I'm making lots of excuses and I am in a way because that's fishing. Um, it's never easy and it's certainly never easy when you're in pursuit of big fish and that's what we came here to do. Uh, that didn't happen but thankfully we did have a half tidy fish to start with so I can't complain all in all. I've had a good day, we've walked, walked miles, covered lots of water and I've given it my best shot. Um, there's always next season and you can count on I'll be back. Catch you again.